Hi there. So last night I done some somewhat serious astrophotography for the very first time using this D3400. And here's the very first image that I shot. Now when I seen this appear on the viewfinder, I was dumbfounded, flabbergasted and blown away. Because basically uh, I just set the ISO on 12,600 I think it is uh, left the aperture wide open and I used this 35mm lens so it was set on 1.8 and used a relatively fast shutter speed of less than a second and the result was impressive like I was just blown away considering the amount of effort that I went to to actually set this up so from there I just went crazy and began shooting pictures all around the yard. So, you know, and I'm in town, like, I've got street lights everywhere and this thing still managed to take an image like that. So, where am I going from and where am I going to with this? Well, last year, early last year, a lot of flat earthers were saying that South Celestial Pole didn't exist. So the only thing I had at the time was an iPad and some electronic skills. I didn't have a fancy camera. So I got the iPad, downloaded a night vision app, configured and set up a microcontroller to trigger the iPad camera so that I could do a time lapse and actually trigger the camera every couple of minutes fixed up on the stars in the direction of the South Celestial Pole. Now while it worked and in the end you ended up with a compressed time lapse of 90 minutes compressed down into a couple of minutes, you couldn't, know, you couldn't see the finer stars. You were pretty much restricted because of the lack of sensitivity of the iPad to just the major stars, Alpha, Beta, Centauri, and uh, the Southern Cross, and a few other stars. Just having a drink. So, while it was evidence uh, to some degree, it wasn't uh, as good as it could have been because the iPad couldn't see what I could see with the naked eye. I wasn't happy with it. So I've gotten this camera now and I intend over the next week or so to take some very long exposures so I can get some quite serious star trails happening uh, pointing at the South Celestial Pole and we're going to concentrate right in on Sigma Octants and the stars surrounding uh, the South Celestial Pole so we can get a really good look at that and some and have some solid evidence uh, for flat earthers to look at and maybe judge whether they're making the right decision in pursuing flat earth as what they believe the earth looks like now moving ahead uh, beyond the video that i'll do showing the uh, star trails around the south celestial pole in the next week or so flat earthers have now since like and it wasn't just me there were a lot of guys working independently out there taking uh, images of the stars in rotation around the south celestial pole uh, i'm in no way claiming you know outright uh, credit for it in fact my, well, my contribution was probably pretty small in the scheme of things but moving ahead, uh, flat earthers, many of them now admit that the South Celestial Pole exists, or at least the phenomena of it. And what they're saying now to make their model work is that off each major continent, like South America, Australia, and Africa, there is a separate South Celestial Pole in rotation that are all exact replications of one another. 
So early next year, I'll, I'll, I will be going to Fiji, which is in longitude terms, halfway between South America and Australia. So I can look from there and shoot the South Celestial Pole from there and actually show that there is only one South Celestial Pole that we all see from wherever we are in the Southern Hemisphere. Because if what they're saying is true, that there's a South Celestial Pole that rotates off the, off the bottom of Australia out to the south, and the same thing with South America, if I go to Fiji, I should actually see two South Celestial Poles. So that's the challenge. And I mean, it's still about eight months, eight, seven, eight months off before I go. So we'll see what happens with that. So that's something to look forward to. But between now and then, I've got a lot of things that I want to do with this camera. Uh, I want to take those 12 minute exposures and maybe even push it out to even longer exposures. I want to do some time lapses where I take a series of shots and then put those together in uh, sequential order so you can actually see the stars rotating. I also want to be able to zoom in and have a closer look at some nebulae because I've noticed on some of the images of the Milky Way uh, that there are that I'm noticing some areas where there are actually some brighter colors visible and flat earthers have been notorious for saying that all images of nebulae are fake and that the colors have been added in so I want to provide evidence that uh, any half decent camera that has the light uh, gathering capabilities can expose those colors and uh, make them visible for us to see. It's just that the naked eye just doesn't have the light gathering ability to actually see those colors because there is just so little light coming from those uh, nebulae. So there are a few things that I want to work on in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hang around, don't hesitate to subscribe because there's much more to come. Have a great day and I'll see you later.